Howdy, hey guys, Spaceman Josh here, and today we're going to be talking about sort of space exploration and who should do it, robots or humans. Now, uh, to, to start right off, I'm going to sort of compare the two a little bit. So, robots tend to be, you know, cheaper, they tend to be durable, and they tend to be replaceable. It's, you know, if, you know, if a robot, you know, ends up uh, being, being destroyed is not that big of a deal, you know, whereas if a human, if it loses a life, that's a whole, you know, big, uh, you know, it's a big deal for us, with good reason, but, so, yeah, so replace, so robots are a lot more replaceable, uh, robots can tend to be durable, depends on how our technology is with spacesuits and whatnot, with current technology, they are more durable, um, and if you look at some of the, for, in terms of cheaper, if you look at some of the uh, missions that a lot of different companies have done, uh, just general, also just a lot of government agencies like NASA, the uh, missions for robots, sending out probes or landers, orbiters, things of that sort, tend to be a little bit cheaper than when than the uh, manned missions. So then, but with the humans, uh, with the human side of it, humans are very creative. They're uh, we're able to, you know. Th Think of things that sort of outside the box with the tools that we're given instead of just the whole this is what I'm programmed to do, this is what I'm going to do type deal. They tend to be sort of more flexible in the sense of if something were to happen, if someone if they if something on the planet or moon or wherever they were exploring, if something changed suddenly and they needed to adapt to it sooner rather than later. Humans are it's a lot easier for humans to go about doing what they need to do to make sure that the mission continues going and that the that everyone stays safe. As opposed to a robot who is waiting for code to arrive, you know, for signals to arrive from Earth to be able to tell what to do so that way it doesn't die. As well as humans, uh, a lot of the human uh, human uh, missions have had a lot more returning knowledge in a, se uh, in a sense of more publications, more just more knowledge has been published out and available to the public for uh, everyone to sort of read about and learn about. Than uh, say some of the uh, other uh, robot missions. Uh, I know that on, when I was looking online, I don't know how accurate this information is, so you know, bear with me on that in a little bit. But I know I was reading about how uh, the Apollo missions, they had about you know two thousand or so publications, and that number continues to rise for the number of publications of information that was brought about from those missions. While as different uh, robot missions like the uh, Soviet uh, Lunus uh, explorers, the their uh, moon explorers, their probes of that nature, as well as uh, NASA's sort of Mars uh, rover exploration. So like you know, uh, Pathfinder, Spirit, Opportunity, those robots, those you know rovers, uh, those two programs each have about have had about four hundred publications put out. And again, bear with me on the launch because I'm not entirely sure how accurate those are or how old that information is. I wasn't able to find that information. But generally the idea of we're able to get more from human human uh, missions than the robot missions. And part of that, you know, for me thinking about that, I think part of that could be, you know, we have the psychology and sort of the anatomy of the human body and how that how those things get affected by going to space and coming back or by going you know orbiting just earth or just come, or sending out to a different planet for a different gravity you know with like you know with uh, as well as like even just normal the moons like our moon when we sent people to the moon how were their bodies affected compared to when they're on earth because of the different gravity the lack of atmosphere them having to have those suits on the entire time that sort of, those sort of ordeals there's more to explore than just the straight uh, uh, geology or astronomy or whatever they were, you know, exp whatever the scientific studying was done on the bo the astronomical body for the, as a result of that body being there. There is more you can explore than ju uh, with uh, with humans because there's the human side of it as well as opposed to robots. They can just really look at okay, what is this piece of rock out in the middle of the, in space like? And so that's sort of, those are sort of sort of the comparing the two, you know, robots, it's sort of a summary, robots are cheaper, more durable and replaceable, while humans are more creative, flexible, and have more returning knowledge. But when it comes down to whether we should have robots, or whether should we, have she we should have humans, in my personal opinion, I think it makes better sense to have both of them. We want to sort of, we have, we want to have both, we want to have a variety in there. And that's because it, you know, 
depending on what the mission is, it's going to depend on what we want to send out. You know, if you're just, you know, collecting rocks, yeah, go send the robots. That's cheaper to do. And, you know, if it's easier to just send the robots out, bring them back, than try to send humans to pick up the rocks. You know, if you send humans, you might get, you know, more a variety of rocks just because you can't really control, to, to a degree, you can't control what, you know, what rocks the robot gets. As a human can be like, oh, this one looks completely different. Let's take both of these. But in the sense that the, in the end, it's actually, it is a lot better to just, you know, have like a, you know, a robot go out and collect rocks because then you can, if you, you know, it's in the end, even if you do it a couple more times than, you know, with just the single man mission, then in the end, it's still a little bit cheaper. And then if you, so say you have a different mission, if you're going and you're placing a, you know, large instruments, whether they be for geology purposes or physics purposes or you know if you're just going out there and placing a telescope on a plant on an area that has less atmosphere than earth without having to send it in orbit you know big that things like that just large instruments that may be something you want a human to do uh one because it, it you know if you have humans that understand the machine better they can understand okay i need to be careful with specifically this area well as this area i can sort of just here you go place it on the thing uh well uh on top of you know if you want to place a large instrument, if you want to send a robot, you have to send a large robot to be able to place it. And that in itself can, can tend to get more on the expensive side, especially depending on what kind of instrument you want to place. If, say, you wanted to analyze soil, that, again, that's another job for robots. You can, we can send you know the uh, scientific instruments needed to be able to analyze that kind of stuff you don't need to send humans or you know, even if you want to humans analyze it you can you know send the robot to go collect the soil and then bring it back and then you can directly compare it right there on the spot with uh, different besides just you know composition you can look at oh this one looks different so this one smells different that sort of thing instead of having to go in and try to just be like oh we know this smells different because it's a different chemical whereas you can be like look this smell this this it actually smells different if you wanted to go and collect and bring it back it's better for have robots to do that you know if you wanted to go and build structures in another uh, solar system body or just a, another area outside of earth if you want to go build a structure send both of them you you can have the humans go to sort of generally overall building the you know the overall structure but if you need to sell up a certain things like lifting a, a single entire wall up up to place it may be a little bit better to have a, you know have a robot that's built to do that by you know by itself or with one other human than having to send three humans to all help put that one wall up that you know sort of ideal that sort of you know when building structures having both can actually be better than sending one or the other and and this course one that's fairly obvious is if you wanted to say measure the impact of space that space has on humans you're, you're gonna send humans that's not really something you can send a robot for because you're measuring the human impact so you want to send humans so you can measure that impact of course there is sort of a degree there you don't want to like oh let's send them into the sun and then see what happens yeah that's not something you want to try doing so there are limits as to what we are, you know, morally and ethically are okay with do, sending humans to go do to see what happens. But, uh, you know, at the same time, do we just send a million dollars worth of, you know, technology into the sun as well? There's over, just the, that limits do, have, do sort of meet eye to eye in terms of, you know, with robots, if, we, if you know, if we're going to send a human to where the human could die, you know, in the same sense, you could send a robot and the robot could die. And that's millions of dollars down the drain, especially if you don't get the data back. So it, there is sort of that thing of you want if you want to measure the impact of humans, you kind of want to send humans. You could also think about you know if depending on how advanced our robotic technology gets, you could uh, we we may end up having to get so complex with robots, we may have to study what the, the impact of a robot has going into space if they're able to observe the things around them and they get affected by that sort of thing. Just different things of uh, you know a lot of what we know now about whether or not we send robots or humans. It's uh, it varies on the mission, but it also varies on the technology available to us. As technology gets more advanced, we may actually just full on just send robots everywhere because it's just cheaper and it's as good as sending humans. Who knows? And so that's all I really have uh, for that. Ultimately, I uh, if you want, so you can also put in the comments below what you think. You know, do you think robots should be going and doing space exploration, or should it be humans? Uh, you put your reasoning behind it. It's always good, you know. It's it's always good to have you know debates and arguments 
uh, for the sake of knowledge. If, uh, if you're just arguing to argue, most of the time don't do that. But yeah, I, I do want you to all sort of in the comments, you know, what, what's your opinion and why? These are these always conversations are always good to have. So other than that, thank you for watching. If you liked it, you can go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, you can hit subscribe. If you want, you can also hit the bell near that uh, near the subscribe button to, and that basically turns on notifications, tells you when I upload. Other than that, thank you for traveling with me today. Spaceman Josh, out.